Yoga Club. Up we go into the clouds. Get ready to float up and away into the clouds with our flying themed yoga club. I can't wait to take you to London to introduce you to Nelson the Pigeon and also explore some pretty awesome flying themed yoga poses too. But before we soar into the sky, I want to mention a few of the lovely messages I've been receiving. I was delighted to hear from Thomasin, who is three and a half and has been teaching her mum, Rebecca, the poses. Thomasin has been doing lots of yoga and is getting much stronger at balancing because of it, which is awesome. Now a big hello to Grant and his sister Abby and hello to you Lucy aged nine from North Little Rock. I'm so glad the yoga has been helping you get to sleep and it's helped your knee feel better. Preet, who is four and a half from Canberra, likes the Nama stories. I'm glad you enjoy them, Preet. I like them too. If you're a fan of words, you'll love Nama stories. And Matilda, I hope you stay strong, shielding at home, and that the yoga continues to be fun. Speaking of yoga, let's get our yoga club underway. Remember, you can always email me at yogaclub at cosmickids.com and I'll do my best to read out your message. So, Let's get ready for takeoff now with our Up in the Clouds Yoga Club. Hello everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms and crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our heart and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. So let's have a look at who our story's about today. Let's look through the cosmonoculars, bringing your thumbs and fingers together have a look through. <gasps> cool! Look at that! Those colours! Those shapes! It's so amazing! So pretty! Now can you see the picture? Oh, yes! Look! It's a pigeon! It's Nelson the pigeon! Oh, he looks a bit dirty, doesn't he? What's Nelson doing? He's doing horse pose. This is great news. We're going to go and see Nelson the pigeon. Let's find out why he's so dirty. We start our story today in a tree. Coming up to stand, bring one foot on top of the other and your hands together at your heart. Grow your tree up nice and tall. Now, are you feeling like a strong tree? Hmm? Can I blow you down? Okay, you stay tall and strong and I'll have a go. Here we go. Doopy doopy dee doo. <sighs> oh, I don't believe it. You are so strong. Let's try it on the other side. Coming back, bringing one foot on top of the other, the other side this time. Your hands together at your heart. Grow your tree up tall. Hmm, can I do it on this side, I wonder? Let me see. You stay tall and strong. I'll try and blow you over. Ready? Doopy doopy dee doo. <gasps> oh, I couldn't do it on that side either. You are a very strong tree. We climb up this tree. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go. And we find Nelson's family nest. Coming to lie on our tummies, we kick our feet up towards our bottom. Reach around to grab our ankles, then smell the flowers to lift up into our nest shape. Today it's Nelson's 16th birthday. That's 16 days old. He's got a cake, a birthday cake, with candles on it. Coming down to lie on your back. Spread your arms wide and lift your legs up to the ceiling like a candle. Nelson blows out all 16 of his candles. <sighs> Lowering our legs all the way down, he comes up to sit, draws his wings together and he makes a special birthday wish. 
I wish to be a star. Standing all the way up, legs wide, arms wide. I want to go to Trafalgar Square, London, the capital city of England. Well, now that Nelson is 16, he's old enough and his mum helps him get prepared. Jump your feet together, hands on your hips. He needs to be able to look both ways when he's crossing the road. So he looks over one shoulder and over the other. Over one, over the other. And to get a really strong neck, he needs to be able to make it go in a circle. All the way one way, and all the way the other way. Very good. Next, Nelson's mummy teaches him how to do superpower pigeon breaths. Crisscross your fingers underneath your chin. Take a big breath all the way in. Lift up those elbows nice and high, and then do a big to the ceiling. Try that again. Cool. Last time. Cool. Last thing, Nelson's mummy makes him a very healthy sandwich and teaches him all about looking after himself, eating well. Sitting on your bottoms, she lays out one slice of bread and then she starts putting on the butter. Butter, 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 butter. Taking her wings out wide, she twists round one way to get some mm, crispy, lovely, healthy lettuce. She gets the lettuce and puts it in. Lettuce, 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 lettuce. Then she takes her arms out wide again, twists the other way, and she gets some lovely juicy tomatoes. Ready? She gets the tomatoes and puts them in. Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. Then she reaches up high and she pops on the top slice of bread, bending her little knees if she needs to. Ooh. Now, Nelson, you need to look after yourself. You need to not be led by the other pigeons and you need to eat healthy food. Can you do that? Nelson thinks he can. He stands up and he gives his mum a big hug. Oh, he can always come back and visit. It's not too far. Then he gets ready to fly. Folding all the way forward, take your arms down low. Then swoop your wings. Wow. Nelson sets off flying, taking one leg back behind you, coming into flying pose. He takes a rest on top of a house, taking your arms above your head and your legs nice and wide. He flies over the countryside through the lovely green hills of England. Then he flies on the other side, taking your other leg back behind you now, spreading your wings nice and wide. He flies that last little bit down into the bustling city of London. Standing up tall, he can see Trafalgar Square. In the centre of it is a tall column, Nelson's column. There's a statue of Lord Admiral Nelson on the top, and that's who Nelson is named after. Right, he dives all the way down, ooh, and comes to land like a little mouse. When he sits up, uh-oh, he sees he's landed right in front of a lion. One, two, three, Rawr! The lions are lying on their bellies like sphinxes, coming to lie on your tummy. Put your forearms down in front of you. Roll your shoulders back and press your chest up like a very proud sphinx. Nelson wonders why these lions aren't moving. They seem a bit cold and hard. And then he realises they're just statues. Oh, he sits up and he wipes his little pigeon brow. Looking around him, he can see all of the pigeons in Trafalgar Square cooing away. Wrap your arms and hold your shoulders and coo, 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 coo. They're coming towards him. He must do his pigeon pose to look his best. Coming to all fours, press into your toes and lift up your tail feathers coming into your downward dog pose. 
Then bring one of your little pigeon legs all the way forward behind your arms. Wiggle your other leg all the way back. Take your wings to the side and puff up your chest going goo, goo, goo. What a very proud pigeon Nelson is. Oh, he must show him the other side as well because he looks better on both sides. Coming back into your lovely downward dog pose. Then lift up your other leg, give it a wiggle waggle and then draw that leg behind your, your arms, taking the other leg back behind you. Wings out to the side, chest up to the sky and goo, goo, goo. Nelson looks around to see the other pigeons coming towards him and he notices they don't look very well. They're hobbling a little bit. They've got scraggy feathers and they're really, really dirty. They hobble right up to him. They look a bit like pirate pigeons. One of them says, hello, I'll show you where to find the best food in town. Follow me. Nelson wants to be very polite and wants to fit in. So he brings his wings together. He bows and he says, namaste. Well, he's so happy to have made some friends. Maybe he won't need his mummy's healthy sandwich after all. Uh-oh, do you think he's forgotten those wise words already? Hmm, I think he has. The hobbly pigeon leads Nelson to what he calls a food chest. Sitting on your bottoms, draw the soles of your feet together, holding onto your toes, fold all the way forwards. Nelson lifts up the lid of the food chest. On the side of the big black can are the letters L, I, T, T, E, R, Litter. And on the other side it spells T, R, A, S, H, Trash. This is a bin, a trash can. And inside is lots and lots of horrible trash, litter and rubbish. This is what the dirty, horrible pigeon says is the best food in London. He says to Nelson, go on, jump in, go and get something nice for the pigeon feast. Nelson doesn't want to be left out, so he stands up. He clasps his little wings behind him and bends his knees, bowing all the way forward. He gets ready to swoop down into the food chest, jumps his little legs behind him and comes down onto his belly. Then he clasps his wings behind him again, lifts himself up and starts to peck at what's in the bin. Peck, 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 peck. Putting his hands underneath his shoulders, he wiggles back out of the horrible food chest as quickly as he can. He's grabbed something to take. Coming onto your knees, he flies up. <sighs> Taking what he's caught in his beak to the big stone table where all of the pigeons are collecting. Sitting on your bottoms, bend your knees, feet flat, hands behind you, lift up making a stone table shape. Nelson looks what's on the stone table. He doesn't think it looks very nice. There's some pizza with old tissue on it. There's some ice cream mixed with ketchup. And there's burgers mushed up with coffee. Oh! All the other pigeons say, go on, time to eat now. Nelson's pretty sure this is not going to do him any good. But he wants to fit in. He wants to do what the other pigeons tell him to do. So on his knees, he gets ready to start eating, folding forwards. After the food feast is finished, all of the pigeons rub a hand on their tummy and pat their heads at the same time. Oh, the problem is they don't feel too happy. In fact, they feel rather grumpy because eating unhealthy food can put us in a really bad mood. Nelson's tummy isn't well at all. It's really grumbling and really aching. 
Lying on his back, he spreads his wings wide, bending his little knees. He takes them over to one side, ow, and over to the other side, ow. He wants to speak to his mummy, so he goes over to the telephone box. Sitting all the way up, stretch your legs out long. He picks up the receiver and he dials the number. Oh, hello, Mum. It's Nelson. Yeah, I did something really bad. I did what the other pigeons told me to do. And now I feel really sick. Oh, Mum, what should I do? I know, Mum, you told me to eat healthy. Yeah, not be led. I'll go to sleep then. All right, Mum. I love you. Bye. He puts the phone down. Then he lies all the way back, getting himself to sleep as best as he can, trying to cope with his tummy ache, feeling happy that he got to speak to his lovely mum. The next morning, he's awoken by the very loud pigeons cooing in the square. Wrap your arms around again and... Once again, a hobbly pirate pigeon comes towards him, standing up. Oh. Morning, Nelson. Want to come with me to the London Underground Tube Station? Nelson looks towards the London Underground Tube Station. Jump your legs wide, arms above your head. It looks pretty dark and pretty grotty. And apparently the food is all over the floor. Ooh, it sounds horrid. Nelson looks at the dirty, scratchy pigeon and wonders what to do. All of a sudden, a crow lands in front of him, coming all the way down onto your tiptoes. Take your hands down flat. Take your knees just behind the tops of your arms and lift your bottom up, leaning forwards. The crow says, Be strong, Nelson. Do what you want to do. Nelson stands. He puffs his little chest out, crisscrossing his feathers behind his back to really let his chest come forward. He thinks about what his mum told him, the wise words of her phone call last night. Should he go with this pigeon to the London Underground Tube Station? No, no he shouldn't. Nelson strongly, firmly says to the scratchy pigeon, no. Thank you. I think I'll just stay here today and I'll eat my sandwich. Goodbye. He's done it. Nelson sits himself down with his healthy sandwich, feeling so proud of himself for following his own heart, for doing right instead of wrong. He sits and eats his lovely sandwich with its lettuce, its tomatoes, feeling great in his tummy. Then afterwards, he heads to the fountains of Trafalgar Square and has a bath. Lying on your backs, he lifts up one little pigeon leg and gives it a shake. Oh, good shower. Then he puts it down and he lifts up the other one. Oh, that's nice. Give it a shake and puts that down. Then he lifts up a wing. Oh, that's nice. And he puts it down. And lastly, his other wing. And then he does his whole body. Ready? Ooh. Ah! After doing that, he pops out of the bath and he lays down in the sunshine to dry off. Lying here in stillness, he's left alone by the other pigeons. He knows he can ask for help if he needs to, but really he knows deep down the difference between right and wrong. All he needs to do is listen to that and not be led by some of those other pigeons who have learnt to go in different ways, ways that might not always be the best way for him. And it's not bad to say no thank you. It's strong to follow your own instinct. So we lie here and we think about our instinct. 
what we know to be good and bad. And in those moments when we have the choice between taking the good option or the bad option, giving ourselves a small moment to think, what's best for me here? What's right? We enjoy this peace, feeling strong inside, and then it's time to wake up, wiggling our fingers, our toes, giving our knees a hug, and rolling onto our sides, coming up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just as we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. Thanks for coming to Trafalgar Square and meeting Nelson the Pigeon. He was great and so were you. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. Everyone. Welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den, your place to feel calm and relaxed and to help our minds stay healthy and happy. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed, we bring our hands to our knees and take a big deep breath. Now, let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's have some sounds. Oh yes! Lots of great sounds to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel relaxed. A gentle stream. And a long note on a violin. Now for a smell. Oh, these look interesting. Oh, chocolate smell. Mm. Log smell. Ooh. Oh, yes. Let's smell the rosemary. Rosemary is a lovely herb and it helps our memory work well. Now we're feeling all calm and relaxed. We're ready to learn about our thoughts. Now, hmm, what is a thought exactly? Oh, look, bubbles. Aha! A good way to think about thoughts is with bubbles. Let's imagine these bubbles are our thoughts. They pop up in your brain. And sometimes there can be quite a few, all at once. Some of them are idea-like. I know, let's bake cookies. Some are memory-like. I remember when we went to the beach. Some are picture-like. Some are song-like. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Some are opinion-like. My favourite colour is purple. They don't hang around for long either. After a while they go pop to make room for new thoughts. The funny thing about thoughts is they join up to our feelings. So some thoughts make us feel happy. My friend is coming for a sleepover tomorrow. Some thoughts make us worry. My math homework is really hard and I don't know if I can do it. Some thoughts even make us laugh. How do you tease a piece of fruit? Banana na na na. <laughs> <laughs> now it's your turn. 
Let's have a look at some of your thoughts. When I ask you a question, just notice what thought pops into your head. There's no need to say it, just have the thought. It may also have a picture with it too. Ready? Take a deep breath and clear all your thoughts away to make your head feel clear. <sighs> Here we go. What is your favourite colour? What is your favourite food? What is your favourite fruit? What makes you really happy? What do you worry about? Do you notice how busy your brain gets when you have all these thoughts bouncing around? Remember, you can always choose which thoughts to believe and which ones aren't helping you. Whatever happens, know that they always do pass, pop or fade away. Often thoughts have a funny habit of popping up when you really don't need them. Like bedtime. It's good to know what thoughts are so we can sort them out when our heads feel really busy and too full. The secret to helping ourselves when this happens is super easy. It's breathing. Yes, it's simple, isn't it? And I know that you are already a master of breathing. So, when thoughts are bubbling over, find a place to be comfy and still. Spend a few moments just breathing. Think in through my nose and out through my mouth. And if you need something to think as you breathe, try this. Breathe in, think one. Breathe out, think two. After that, your thoughts will settle down. I hope that helps you know your thoughts a little better. So you can watch out for them and pick the ones that are most helpful to you. Keep up the practice to become a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den Master. Bye bye! The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe Aeroplane pose. Coming down onto two knees and stretch your arms out wide. Come down onto one hand and wave at the sky. Hi sky! Now bring one foot in front of your knee and shoot your back leg out behind you. Lifting up your hip and going <gasps> Wow, did you see that aeroplane? That was amazing. Let's do it on the other side and see if it comes back again. Coming back onto two knees, taking your arms out wide. Drop down onto the other hand now and wave at the sky. Hi sky! Bring one foot in front of your knee and shoot your back leg out behind you, lifting up your hip and going Now aeroplane pose is very good for building strength in your whole body, your arms, your legs and your wrists. It's also very good for balance and it's brilliant to do at the beginning of the day. Now, I wonder where that aeroplane is. We've been here for ages. Oh, I think I can hear it. Here it is. It's coming. Ah! Aeroplane pose. Hot air balloon pose. 
coming to sit on our bottoms and crossing our legs. We cup our hands around our mouth and we do a big blow to blow up our hot air balloon. Here we go, big breath in and blow. Letting your arms come up as your balloon grows bigger. Keep blowing. And when your balloon gets as big as it can be, we rock a little bit from side to side, like we're floating up into the air. Wow, it's beautiful up here. Hot air balloon pose is really good for breathing a lovely bit of calmness into your day and clearing your mind. <gasps> Look at all the beautiful balloons flying together. They're amazing. Calmly floating up into the sky, peacefully, lovely, calmly. <laughs> Oops. Hot air balloon. Peace out. Cloud story. Hello, Jamie here. Welcome to Peace Out. First, make sure that you're super comfy. It's important that you feel settled because when your body relaxes, so does your mind. And then you can imagine all sorts of amazing things really easily. It's like opening a magic door to your dreams. Only you're really awake. But you can go inside and have a look. So find a space. Choose whether you want to lie down or sit, either on the floor with your legs crossed or sitting nice and tall on a chair, the soles of your feet resting flat on the ground and your hands resting in your lap. Decide now which works best for you and get settled. Now, let your body be still. Your eyes are open so you can blink, but they're not looking at anything in particular. Just softly looking ahead. Can you feel your breath moving? Coming in through your nose and then out of your mouth. See if you can just watch it. Coming in through your nose and out of your mouth. That's it. And one more. With this one, as you breathe out, just let your eyelids softly close. Well done. Now all you have to do is listen to my words and enjoy the pictures that appear in your mind. If the pictures aren't happening, it probably means you need to relax just a tiny bit more. So breathe deeply and sink your body down further. Be peaceful and simply listen. Imagine you are lying on your back on the softest green grass. In a garden or a place you know. A park maybe or just a big wide open field. As you lay here, 
you see the huge blue sky above you. In the sky you see lots of fluffy, puffy white clouds. As you look at the sky, you notice that the clouds are making shapes. Shapes of things that you recognise. There's one, the shape of a rabbit. You can see its ears and the shape of its nose. Another is the shape of a whale with a huge body and a fork-shaped tail. Oh look, a crocodile-shaped cloud and it looks like it's smiling. That one looks like the letter C. A ginormous puffy letter C. And that one looks like a house. It has windows. A bubbly shaped roof. And a chimney. With a wispy bit of cloud making a twist of smoke. Maybe a cloud shaped person lives inside. As the clouds move across the sky, the shapes change. New ones appear. It's like the sky is telling you a story by painting pictures with the clouds. You see the shapes and you can put them together to make a story. What other cloud shapes can you see? Watch. Enjoy them. You decide what the shapes remind you of. It feels great to know that you can make cloud shapes here in your mind. And you can see them in real life too. Cloud watching will always help you feel calm, free and thankful that you are here in this beautiful world. There is so much that is beautiful. Even everyday things like clouds that are there all the time. It's time to come back into the space around you, back into your body again. Start by noticing how your body feels here on the floor or the chair beneath you. How heavy it feels. Now listen and see if you can hear any sounds around you. Ones nearby and others far away. Now take a big deep breath. In through your nose and sigh out from your mouth. Have a little stretch. Move a little. Jiggle your fingers, toes, ankles and wrists. And gently open your eyes. Just for a moment, sit back and notice how you feel after that. Do you feel different to how you did before? Well done for taking a few moments to look after yourself. Your mind and body will now be all the stronger for it. And remember... The sky is always there to remind us to be open to ideas, to believe that anything is possible. I hope you try cloud watching outside in real life one day too. And let the clouds tell you a story.
Maybe you can think of the story that came to you today, in the clouds in your mind. You could draw them, or write it down if you like. Your story will be different to everyone else, as only you know what the shapes look like. You are free to make them into whatever you like. I'll see you again soon. This is Jamie saying peace out.